Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I own the Water Filter eStore and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about troubleshooting your water softener, specifically too much water in the brine tank. So uh, it's a common symptom that there's a problem. So we're going to look at uh, what are some of the most common uh, solutions for this problem, uh, most obvious solutions, and uh, also the simplest. So that's what we're going to start with is the simplest. We have a great video in this series about how a water softener works, so you may want to familiarize yourself with that before we go into the, the nuts and bolts of uh, resolving this uh, too much water in the brine tank issue. So the first thing you want to check is to make sure that this uh, brine line is attached inside the brine line level control or the float. You can see the float is right here and this uh, line here needs to be attached properly to that float. If it's not, the water just flows in and just keeps going higher and higher and higher. So uh, that's uh, the first thing to step, uh, the first step to check. The, the second one you want to check is to make sure that there's not a salt clog in the bottom of this uh, brine tank. Because if it is, that limits the water going into the brine tank so it can absorb the salt and then is again drawn out of the brine tank. So at the bottom of this brine well, there's some slots cut horizontally and that's where the water goes in and out. If there's a salt clog in the bottom, that'll restrict that flow. So we have a great video in this series that shows how to uh, remove a salt clog from your water softener and I suggest you check that uh, next. So the next thing to check is that the drain line isn't uh, clogged or frozen. Um, also if there's a kink in the drain line like that, uh, it would restrict the flow enough that uh, it wouldn't draw brine through the brine line. So make sure you check that. The other thing to check is the drain line flow control. So if we remove the drain line where it connects here, this little button here determines the, the amount of water that flows through. If that becomes clogged, and if you have iron, it often does, that needs to be cleaned out to maintain that flow. The next thing to check is uh, the brine line flow control. So that's, again, where the brine line connects to the water softener valve, right here is the brine line flow control and again it's a very small button. I've seen these where there's a debris inside the brine tank, it gets sucked up through here and it clogs that little button and then it won't uh, draw brine anymore. So make sure you clean that out. Another potential cause is the brine level control, in other words the float that's here. So um, often I've seen it happen where this cap might have been lost and it wasn't replaced and salt ended up going inside here and it actually clogs the bottom of the float at the very bottom here. So if you remove the float, take it out, wash it out and put it back in, ensure that it's uh, working correctly, that's something else you could check. The injector is inside here and that's one of the most common causes of too much water in the brine tank is that the injector becomes clogged. So what you need to do is uh, you need to remove it and clean it. So this particular um, water softener valve has a neat feature where you can actually use the cap to pry out the injector. And here's the injector here. So as you can see it has a very small hole in the middle and that creates the suction that draws the brine into here. If that hole becomes clogged it won't create that suction. So what you need to do is you need to clean this. If you have high amounts of iron in your water this will become clogged within a few years for sure and uh, needs to be cleaned periodically. So if you soak this in CLR or uh, a similar type product and uh, you can make sure that that hole it gets opened up. You can use a, a wooden toothpick. Try not to use metal because it will uh, change the size of that hole inside there. If you can't get this clean, you may have to replace the injector. So once you get a new one or you have this one clean, you just pop it back in, push it all the way down, tighten up the cap. Be sure to also check the faceplate. If it's a blank display on the LED display like this one is here, then there's a, a problem with the circuit board and the circuit board might need to be replaced. So the last thing to check is the spacer stack and pistons. So to do that, you would remove the drain line, you would remove the brine line, and with the valve in service, you'd look down see if there's any water flowing across the valve. If it was, then the problem is with the spacer stack and the pistons and they would need to be replaced. So a spacer stack for this um, model uh, water softener looks like this. Pistons look like these, and uh, it's a fairly large job to do it, um, but that would, be, uh, that would be the cure for this. So hopefully you've checked through this process from the beginning to the end. You've checked all the simpler ones, and uh, if you get this far, unfortunately, this is what needs to be done. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified about all the new videos as they become available on our channel. 
You can also check out our channel, GaryTheWaterGuy.com. Lots of great information there on our YouTube channel and uh, lots of great videos to help you with your water treatment uh, concerns or questions. You can also go to our website at TheWaterFilterEStore.com or TheWaterStoreMidland.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from The Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.